Hello, the title of this video is how to teach Native American music in the music education classroom today. And I am creating this video um, in response to the overwhelming um, same comments that I, that I keep seeing and hearing from music educators and the lack of knowledge within this area is, um, it's 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 immense. So who am I? Right. My name is Michelle McCauley. I have a master's in, mu in music education. I received that um, degree in 2014, and since that time, I spent four years in the elementary music classroom. Before that, I had spent about three to four years in as a band teacher, teaching beginning band, middle school band, um, instructing high school students, teaching clarinet lessons, um, and and those sorts of things. But what I what I found when I became an elementary music teacher is that there is a stress on uh, doing cultural dances and having some multicultural music within the classroom. And when students are so young, when they're in preschool, kinder, first, second, third, and fourth, the concepts of stereotypes to them are they're they're not a they're not a concept for younger students but the educators the music educators i find in the classroom have little um very little to zero knowledge about native american music and what some of the elementary music teachers want to use in the classroom and call native american music such as land of the silver birch or canoe song only perpetuate more stereotypes um there's also another song i need to really look up the title that actually um was being by one of the music educators i worked with was being she was presenting it as if it was a lakota sioux song however it when i looked it up and from you know, did some research on it. It was actually a Maori song because none of the language structures, I was like, I'm not a fluent speaker in the Lakota language, but I've heard the language enough to know that um, this songs does not sound this, that this music educator, educator said, and, and, it, and it actually panned out. It wasn't even native. So the biggest thing I want to tell music educators, especially um, music professors, if you, um, if you're a music ethno uh, music ethnologist, you might you might know about this, right? <laughs> um, but Native American tribal people today in the United States and in Canada, we are very much alive. We are very much practicing our songs and dances, and they exist in every single state in every single province that we have. There are tons of cultural revitalization programs going on, and we have to have revitalization programs going on simply because both in the United States and in Canada, both governments wanted to, they actually put schools into place. And in Canada, they were called residential schools. In the United States, they were called boarding schools where they sent and they took Native American children pretty much ripped them out of their homes sent them to these schools did not allow them to go back to their reservations um, did not allow them to speak their languages did not allow them to do their dances or their songs instead everything had to be in English they had to take new names now this system has now ended in the United States. I believe the boarding school here that we have in Nevada, I'm in the state of Nevada, closed in 1981. So 1981 is when I was born. Towards the end of some of the boarding school eras, the severe punishments had stopped because that th that is just not okay. Um, and some, in some instances, some of the, the boarding schools have decided to, to switch over and maybe say, okay, well, maybe now it's okay to teach language. However, a lot was lost through that, through those processes. And in Canada, we have the residential schools. And the, the teachers of these schools um, were usually uh, clergy, is some sort of religious order. And a lot of the music that was put onto <laughs> Native students or that they could find was instrumental classical. Now... This is where uh, we come to today when we want to include Native American music in the classroom. Why is it hard to find Native American music in, and things like that? And I think it's just because it, there's a tough history that I just explained to you about that. And in music edu teacher music education programs across the country and in Canada, solely focus on European classical music as in the ability to read music as the highest form of music, which I'm going to 
um, disagree with that simply because I, as a musician myself, I am a clarinet player. I'm also a trombone player. Um, I do read music, right? I've played jazz. I played in wind ensembles. Um, I was even a drum major. I directed um, marching bands. I've taken bands to music festivals. Um, I'm very aware of different meters, how to count them, how to conduct them. Uh, played a variety of classical music since the age of 10. And um, I, I love my classical musical side. However, when it comes to my cultural side, from what I remember as a young girl, I remember doing my dances and I remember the tonalities of the songs that I grew up with within my own culture. When I became an elementary music classroom and came into the music classroom, what I relied more on is my cultural knowledge of teachings and how to teach those songs. And when we teach songs um, in the Native American culture, first of all, there needs to be a reason why. Why are we teaching this certain song? And then it is going to be done all uh, by rote or orally. Now, I also believe that the skills, when you are able as a music educator to have so many patterns orally in your head and you're able to recall those um, patterns at the drop of a dime, that is a high level skill. So we have a, many cultural musicians throughout the world and especially in... Um, in Native American musical tribes, in our intertribal music, and in our tribal music, we have many musicians who are, they can recognize and they have so many patterns by their ear. And then the more you travel and the more you listen to this, you can also differentiate what songs belong to what tribes or what groups, you know, are represented. Um, so by state by state, province by province, there are Native American tribes, more than one. There are many of them. And in many of these tribes within the United States and Canada, there are singers, there are dancers. Uh, we are practicing our culture. And music education is kind of like uh, very removed, far removed from that from that fact. So I'm bringing that to you today, a starting place for you as a music educator would be to get, go do a Google search or whatever search engine of your choice, put in um, Native American tribes in the state or First Nations tribes in your province. Put in your state because it varies state by state. Each state will be different. There are no same tribes throughout the United States. Right, so in my state of Nevada, for example, there's 27 different uh, Native American tribes that we that we have that are federally recognized that 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 are listed. Right, so I'm a member of the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe. In Reno, right, in the Reno, the bigger city that we have, we have the Reno Sparks Indian Colony, which is its own separate tribe. Um, Fallon Paiute Shoshone tribe. McDermott tribe. The list goes on, but you find every single tribe is different, and some of them may have Paiute in there. And then when we get to go into Las Vegas, that is Southern Paiute. I am Northern Paiute, so Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe, and then we have the Moapa, that's Southern Paiute. So it's a very big deal to name what song you are getting um, the getting the song from. Now, music education resources that exist currently. I have not found any music education resources that actually represent the tribe that it says that it represents. And then um, to be able to be used in the classroom, something that has integrity, something that really is represent representative instead of stereotypical for Native American music. And that is, uh, we are lacking resources for that immensely. Land of the Silver Birch and Canoe Song are ones that keep coming up over time. Those are outdated. About 1906 or whenever they were written, they are outdated. And not only that, they perpetuate the stereotypes that was put out by the Western <laughs> movies of a Hollywood. Would, right so this song came a little bit before that time and just the tonalities in there once you once you really start listening to Native American music um, you can put it in YouTube and, and just start a search you will quickly realize and understand those two songs have no place um, representing Native American music and honestly because they are so just to me myself as a as a music educator once i heard those i will never be teach i will not ever teach those in a music classroom because they perpetuate a stereotype that has been associated with my culture with native culture i refuse to to perpetuate them any longer and any music educator i also believe um who chooses to continually teach these songs that that is doing that is 
that is not memorative, you know, that is not helping uh, Native American music in any regards. And if you're using it as their great partner songs, there's plenty other partner songs that exist in the world today. So get on Google, um, look state by state, Native American tribes in. Um, and then another thing you can also do is look up, you know, powwows, www.powwows.com. There is a lot of information there about what powwows are, what they mean. This is an intertribal gathering of tribes from Canada and the U.S. And also other indigenous groups can show up. But largely it is the Native American groups, the First Nations groups of Canada and the United States coming together to do intertribal dancing. And they'll I explain intertribal dancing. There, I did do an interview with them. You, if you find the interview section where they start interviewing dances, there is one where I'm featured in there. Um, however, you could get on there and you can find the dates of actual powwows and get yourself, you know, get yourself to one so you can experience and hear, um, hear the song. So we need to spend time with Native American culture. We need to rethink about how we approach this and understand that within music, elementary music pedagogy, you know, with ORF and Kodai, and then we have um, the classical, where you were trained, the classical music European, um, I guess, diaspora at universities, none of these things help really with that understanding of how Native American music should be taught, how it's even authentic. You need to spend time with the people, with culture, because uh, this, our music predates music education. It predates uh, classical music even coming here. And a lot of it is not even inspired by classical music or anything like that. Uh, we do, however, have hand drum songs today that you can heard being sung in English because many of us through the boarding school system, the residential school system, many of our grandparents were forced to learn English. So a lot of them too, uh, some, some of our elders and our grandparents did not see the need to teach us our language because it wasn't going to be the way that we were going to get in the world. So there's another explanation for that. This is a very deep subject. Uh, I hopefully will have some articles written and published in some publications coming up. But if you have any questions you would like, go ahead and um, you can put them in the comments below. I will read them and I will be coming on to do another video. Um, they'll, they'll probably be, there's going to be several because this topic, like I said, is is so... Um, is so unknown and the same questions keep coming up. So first and foremost, Native Americans, we are alive today. There is a way to check whether or not songs of music education resources are authentic and I have yet to find any authenticity. I do have one song that I created, uh, a Paiute numbers counting song, Northern Paiute numbers counting song you can find on my, on my channel. Feel free to use that. And if you also want to take an ORF style approach to it, I would appreciate if you can contact me. And that's another, uh, another uh, for another time for another video is the fact that once you start teaching Native American music in the classroom, freestyle, free form, just going free with it is not really an option just because it already serves a purpose within a culture that that it's been doing for a long time. There's already a dance to it. There is a specific drum patterns to it. And unless you're a culture bearer or unless you're working with somebody who owns that song or, you know, kind of changes the traditions within a tribe, then you as a music ed educator, your bachelor's degree, your PhD, your master's degree does not give you permission to change um, something that does not need to be changed and already exists within a community. So I will see you next time. Um, Sa'a opanidua.